Good evening. We've had some technical difficulties. I don't know if you've seen any of the uh, the first part or not. We've had some technical difficulties. But let me ask you this. We have a sad news in our family. Tyrion Sue Cochran's oldest son, Michael, has died this morning with the COVID-19. I pray that you would pray for the Cochran family. Terry and Sue are still trying to recover from the COVID-19, but her, their son, Michael. Remember their daughter, Beth, as well. Pray for the entire family. Pray for our people during this difficult time. I know it's Wednesday night and a lot of things are going on. and um, I don't know the answer, but I know that God has got this. And somewhere along the line, God will be able to touch us and, and make things work. I pray tonight as we get ready to look into the Word of God. And I thought I was live a minute ago, but I wasn't. And I apologize for that. But let's have a word of prayer for all of our people. Father, we love you. Thank you for this many blessings of life that you bestowed upon us. Lord, forgive us this evening of our sins and of our iniquity and of our transgressions, O oh God. Lord, I pray for the Cochran family. I pray for Terry and Sue and Beth. I pray, God, that you would comfort them in this most difficult time in their life. Lord, I pray for those today that are stressed out. I pray, God, that you give them peace that passes all understanding. Lord, will you put your hand upon our country, upon our president, vice president, the Senate and the House. Lord, if we ever needed you, Father, we need you today. If we ever needed a miracle in our lives, oh God, we need it today. Lord, will you bless our country? Help us today as we look into your word. Give us a wisdom and knowledge to rightly divide. In Christ's name we pray and amen. Uh, I do ask that you pray for Pastor. My mind is going 90 miles a minute. Um, Terry and I grew up together. He is my first cousin, Ambrose's oldest son. Him and I... Uh, did everything together and um, I've talked to him and just briefly on the phone as a pastor and as a family member. He's wanted me to do Michael's funeral and I told him I'd be honored. We'll do it later on. He's going to be cremated and we'll have a memorial later on. But I ask that you pray. If you have your Bibles tonight, go with us tonight in uh, the book of Isaiah. You know, Easter's coming up and we're coming up close to the time of the crucifixion, the resurrection, and then Sunday we'll celebrate Easter, our risen Savior. But you know, Jesus paid a tremendous price that you and I could have life and have it more abundant. To think about being able to uh, celebrate Easter, the risen Savior, he first had to go to Calvary and die. But let's look at what Isaiah said in the Old Testament. He talked about the cross. In Isaiah 53, he talks about the cross and the crucifixion. Look what he said in verse 1. Who has believed a report? Co question mark. I wonder today, who does believe our report? Who does believe that Jesus Christ came and died, that they could have life and have it more abundant? The Christians today, well, we're kind of wishy-washy. We want him when things are bad, but when things are good, we kind of have a tendency to forget him. And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Question mark. Who is it revealed to? It's revealed to everyone that will ask. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, believes the word of God, can be saved. But we limit it because we don't want to call upon the Lord. Listen to what it said in verse 2. For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant. A tender plant. Think about that. And a root out of dry ground. He has no form of covenant. And when you shall see him, there is no beauty that we shall desire him. Other words, he was not a person that you would look at and have a desire to, to be with. He was average or below average. He was not someone that you really wanted to be part with. He didn't, his outward appearance did not attract you, but what he had on the inside, the word of God is what draws you and the Holy Spirit of God. It is what draws people today. It is not my appearance, not how I look, not how I talk, but how I live, the word of God. And I believe today if there was ever a time 
that we live the word of God, we need to live it today. Look at verse 3. He was despised and rejected of man. What's going on today, folks? Look at the world. If there was ever a time we turn to God, we should turn to God. Now, I'm going to say this, and some of you may get mad at me, but they're canceling surgeries that need to be done because of COVID-19. Everything in the world is shut down, but the abortion clinics are still running. What are you telling God? We got this. You don't got this. My friend, we better wake up and realize murder is murder. If you murder a child, it's no different in the womb or out of the womb. You're a murderer. No murderers shall have any part in the kingdom of God. And my friend, you better think about that. All right? Surely, listen, a man of sorrow and acquainted of grief. Sorrow and grief. You don't think he don't understand what we're going through today? You don't think he don't understand my heart? That's heavy tonight. My heart is broken and things are not what they should be. He knows that. He's experienced all things. With grief, he's had grief in his life. Oh my goodness. Rejected of his own family members. Rejected of his own. And we'll look at it in just a minute. And we hid as it were our faith from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. I want to go over to uh, Zechariah here. 12 and 10, and read something to you. He was despised of man and rejected. Listen to what the prophet Isaiah said. And I will pour upon him the house of David and upon the inheritance of Jerusalem, the spirit of God and the, and the supply, and they shall look on me whom they have pierced. As Zechariah is talking about the piercing of the sword. And they shall mourn for him as one mourneth for his own son and shall be in bitterness for him as one that is bitterness for his firstborn. Mary stood at the foot of the cross, looked up at her only son, her first son, and weeped and had bitterness and it was prophesied in the word of God. Listen to this in Zechariah 13 and 6. And one shall say unto him, what are these wounds in thy hand? Talking about nailing him to the cross. Then he shall answer them, These which I was wounded is in the house of my friend. You know what? We call him friend. But he said, You have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. A friend sticketh closer than a brother. His own um, religious people crucified him. And took him to Calvary. Surely he shall bore our grief. And carry our sorrows. And yet we did not esteem him. Stricken and smitten of God. And afflicted. In verse 5 is where I want to get to tonight. But he was wounded. For our transgressions. He was bruised. For our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace. Was upon him. And with his stripes. We are healed. The very first thing. He was wounded for me. He was wounded for you. That you could have it. The Bible says he was wounded because he loves us. You're talking about John 3.16. Right here is a perfect picture of the love of God in John 3.16. And who was pierced? And that would have been in, you can read it in John chapter 19 and verse 34. Why was he wounded? For our transgressions. Why was he wounded? For our transgressions. See, you and I had sinned against God and we were no longer in fellowship with God. Therefore, we had to have a mediator between man and God. We had to have a go-between. We had to have something that could cleanse our sins and, put, and present us wholly unto God. Jesus Christ died, presented his blood that our sins could be washed away. He did it for our transgression. He had nothing else desired. They, no one desired to even look at him at the cross. Why did he do this? Because he loved you. Bruise for me, my Lord. Think about it. The beating, the humiliation, 
the cat of nine tails, the slaps in the face, his skin ripped off, punched with big fists, beaten, bruised. He was bruised for my iniquity. Imagine how bruised he was on the cross. Oh my goodness. He took my sin, your sins, and the sins of the world and put them on his shoulder, nailed himself to a cross, become sin. One who knew no sin became sin, the Bible says, that you and I could have life and have it more abundant. I am so glad tonight that he died. Bruce, what about the crown of thorns that they platted and put up on his head, pushed down into his skull, those thorns? And as the blood ran down his face, his eyes and cheekbones almost busted. His jaw could have been broken. Who knows? He took some tremendous licks in the face, the beating, but yet he looked down and did it from you and I. Bruised from the nails that held him to the cross. Every joint in his body was out of, out of place, but not a bone in his body was broken. It's according to the word of God. He was bruised that you and I could go free. Praise God. My transgressions, my sins, and everything I had, he nailed to the cross. The third thing and final thing, my peace. I don't know about you today, but I need him more than I've ever needed him in my life. If I've ever needed a peace of God in my life, I need it today. If I ever needed him to put his arms around me and hold me and tell me that everything's going to be all right, it is today. Listen, the chastisement of our peace was up on him. He said, peace I give you, not as the world give I peace, give I peace as the Father gives it to me. You know, as he spoke peace to the sea, as he spoke peace to the storm and the wind, I pray tonight that he speaks peace to your heart and into your soul. I pray tonight that he reaches down and gives you peace that passes all understanding. No one else can give you that peace, that hope, that assurance that you need except Jesus Christ. And he is there. I want to encourage you tonight to pray for one another. Pray for our people. Pray for Sunday, Easter Sunday. Um, we've talked a little bit. We're going to go live stream again. That's the only thing I know to do because this virus is so bad. But I would like to encourage you Sunday morning, about 7 o'clock in the morning, to everyone that will, walk outside your home, stand in the front yard, raise your hands toward heaven, and thank God for the risen Savior. Thank God for a risen Savior. And I, I say that because I believe the world needs to know that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. I thank you for tuning in every day and putting up with me. I don't know how good it is. I, all I can do is look at myself. It's tough, but I love you. I thank God for you. We're going to close in a word of prayer for the Cochran family one more time and our church. Please remember our family in prayer. We have a death in our family. We will deal with it the best way we know how, but I know that God has it all. Father, we love you. We thank you for the many blessings of life. I pray, God, that you would touch our people tonight. I pray, God, those that are sick in body, I pray, Lord, that you would touch them. Those that are struggling, those uh, that need peace tonight, Lord, would you speak peace to them. Lord, remember the Cochran family as we close tonight. Bless them from the crown of their heads under the soles of their feet. For it is in Christ's name we pray, and amen. May God bless you. I hope to see you tomorrow.